<clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Thank you for joining us. <coughs> I'm your host, Jonathan, and that strange noise you heard was my co-host, Emily. Tonight, we are providing you with a service, perhaps the most important play you've ever had the pleasure to witness. More useful than Hamlet. Slightly. I mean, who can't identify with being a prince, uh, having the ghost of your dead father come back and say you want a bloody path of revenge? It certainly helped me through my most recent family situation. But can Hamlet help you find hand sanitizer? No. Case closed. Will this play show people how to find hand sanitizer? No, but, but it'll do everything else. Where we're going, we don't need hand sanitizer. I don't know about that, but without further ado, it is time for 10, ten ways, ways to survive, to survive life, life, life in a, qu life in a life quarantine. In <clears throat> do you think we could do like a, like a cool sound effect with that? We can try. That is all we're doing tonight. <laughs> Behold, our show. 10 ways to survive a life in a quarantine. <clears throat> Method one is uh, fall in love with inanimate objects. A great way to maintain your sanity in these difficult times is to form a complicated relationship with an object. Let's see how Aiden's doing. <laughs> yes, yes, I am here and I am negotiating quarantine very well. In fact, you know what, honestly, I prefer it because I get to spend time with my new best friend, Yuki. Say hello, Yuki. <laughs> he's he's shy. He talks when we're alone. I mean, especially at night. But uh, now that he's in front of the camera, he kind of just clams up. That's okay. I can do the talking for the both of us. Even though we had agreed to uh, both be talking on camera. That's fine. It's fine. It's totally fine. I'm not upset or anything, Yuki. Not at all. What's that? Oh, n now you've got stuff to say? But but just quietly? Just to me? <laughs> if that's If it's that important, then just, just say it for everyone. All right then, that's how we're gonna do this. You're just gonna make me look crazy in front of all of my friends. That's fantastic. Anyway, Yuki and I have been getting along great. We go to walks on my closet and back to my bed, and then, you know, sometimes this is super fun. We just stare into each other's eyes like this. It's magical. You're so beautiful, Yuki. <laughs> Normally he says it back, um, I mean, which is nice. It's. Nice to hear that, you know, the validation of your feelings, but he's playing hard to get, I guess. It doesn't hurt. I guess I'm not enough for you! Is that it? Is that what you want to hear? Fine. I don't need you. I have other friends. Meet Pen. Pen loves me for me, and I love Pen. I have been in love with Pen this whole time. Hello, everyone! I know what you're thinking. What's her secret? She looks amazing. And yes, I do. Thank you. Well, there's a special new someone in my life, and his name is... Sir Lamp from the Kingdom of Lamps. He's a prince. You're probably wondering how a prince from the Kingdom of Lamps arrived in my room. Well, sometimes things are just like a fairy tale, right? I was sitting in my room like a fairy princess, waiting for a prince to come rescue me, and he did. Although, now he's quarantined with me and can't leave, but that's fine. You light up my life, you light up my room, you let me read when it's dark, you light up my day, even though I don't need you to. Not everyone has a special love like this. Most knights will read poetry to each other. Well, actually, Sir Lamp can't read or speak, which makes him a perfect boyfriend, honestly. He's a good listener. So much listening. You're probably jealous right now. That's all right. We don't care. Our love is going to shine brightly. Shh, my love. Shh. That, that seems like a healthy relationship. I want to date Sir Lamp. Oh, well, he's, he's not very bright. Those are the best kind. We're on to method two, our second method. Performing your own musicals with your pets. 
That's right. You have co-stars in your own home. Use them. And you don't have to pay them with anything except treats. Abby, show us how it's done. Hi, my name is Abby, and welcome to the most realistic production of cats that you've ever seen. And this is McCavity, the majestic cat. And this one, oh, <laughs> I don't know where she went. So I guess McCavity will be playing multiple roles. Come to mama, room time summer. Oh, oh, <laughs> he's shy. I asked my mom to get me 16 more cats and she just got in her car and drove away. <laughs> I thought she was going to get more cats, but it's been three days now, so I'm starting to worry. Anyways, if you want to bring me some cats, you can just set them right on my doorstep in crates, and that would be amazing. They would be loved and hugged and put into starring roles in this production. They, anyways. <laughs> The story of cats is about Jellicle cats. And one of the cats are sacrificed to the underworld. And the others just go on with for no reason at all. And they sing and they dance, just like this one. <laughs> They're learning. <laughs> Anyways, this production is really coming along. All I need is a few more months and a bunch of more cats. Memory all alone in my room now I can dream of the old days We could go outside then I remember the times I didn't like going to school Let the memories live again Thank you! I think that was better than the movie. Definitely. But, Cats isn't the only movie that you can perform from your own home. In snout he came to me, he sleeps in place. The dog that calls to me and licks my face. And do I pet again? His snout is cute. The wiener of the opera is here inside my room. Feel once again you'll see give me a pet my snout is over you and stronger yet and though you don't always give me a treat the wiener of the opera is here Give me a treat. No, I can't. I mustn't. Those who have seen your sweet fuzzy tummy, they will seek your treat will disappear. My spirit and your snout are very neat. The wiener of the opera is here. Give him a treat. Oh, I love you. Let me see you. I love you. I will never, ever leave you. Beautiful. I want pets in all the plays from now on. Well, you just might get your wish. Hello, and welcome to my Two minutes, one person, one dog version of Beauty and the Beast. Timer's ready? Oh, is Scout ready? Is Scout ready? Yeah, yeah? And go. Go. Lights up on a provincial town <laughs> in France. Hey, look! Hey, look, it's Belle! Wow, she is so pretty. She's so pretty. 
But she is, in fact, very peculiar. I hate this place. Get me out of this town. Hey, look. It's my daughter, Belle. Papa, why don't I sit in here? Well, my daughter, well, daughter, it is, it is for, because of the unfortunate fact that you can, in fact, read, and, and nobody else here can read. Oh, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. Well, I'm off to wander into the forest with a ridiculous invention. <laughs> Isn't that, like, dangerous? Well, my daughter, I, I suppose it is, but what could possibly hurt me besides a pack of wolves or an enchanted monster in a castle? <laughs> Oh, look, it's an enchanted monster <laughs> in a castle. <laughs> uh, skipping forward, skipping forward, Gaston comes in and he's like, Ooh, uh, marry me, Belle, marry me. And she's like, absolutely not, heck no. And then she somehow realizes that her father has been captured, so she wanders into the forest. I guess I'll wander into the forest now. And then she encounters wolves. Grr, 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 grr. Grr yourself, stupid wolves. Get away, get away from the pretty lady. Let's go, come back, come back, come back, come back. What the oh, what's this? I have never seen somebody so beautiful before. I hope you can see past appearances because, because clearly, clearly I can't. Please, will you love me even though, even though I'm hideous? Will you? I, I have, I have so many books you can read. I have so many books. You can read them all. You can read them all if you want. Oh. <laughs> be our guest, be our guest, put our service to the test. Belle, Belle, I have so many books that you can read. Will you love me forever? No, please, Belle, come back. I know I'm hideous, but please come back. What if, what if I gave you, what if I gave you a treat? Would you love me then? Would you love me forever, Belle? Come back, Belle, come back. Oh, oh, it's working. She loves me for treats. She loves me for treats. This, this is basically Stockholm Syndrome. <laughs> but I love you. Kiss me. Big finish scale. Come back. Mwah! Happy ending. <laughs> I didn't think he was going to make it. The key to Belle's heart was through her stomach with treats. Makes sense. And now it's time for method three. A big problem is keeping yourself occupied. How do you spend the time if not planning revenge? Revenge on who? You'll find out. Gabe has some. Gabe has some answers for us in our in our third method: fun with scissors or um or so much crafts. Hey everybody, Gabriel here. And during this quarantine, I've learned all kinds of new things, like how to hide from the rest of my family. And the best place to do that is right here in the garage. Today, I'll be showing you how to build a birdhouse. A birdhouse? That's exactly right. Now, I'm sure you're asking yourself, Gabriel, do birds really need houses? Don't they just build nests for themselves? And aren't you just encouraging the birds to be lazy and not do their own work by providing subsidized housing for them? I mean, think about it. You don't build squirrel houses. I don't see anyone building a deer house out there. Those animals have to live outside like, well, animals. And all of a sudden you're privileging birds over the other animals? What the heck are you doing? You know, you actually bring up some pretty good points there. I mean, do the birds really need our help? Those dudes can fly. Other animals can't fly. They have to walk on the ground like idiots, and we're making stuff for birds? <laughs> birds poop on your head. Do other animals poop on your head? No. Does a deer come out of the woods, climb up the side of your house, lean over the gutter, and poop on your head? No. Deer don't do that. Not to mention that birds are free, right? They can fly anywhere. It's like they're super beings and I'm stuck to the earth like a fool. They're not in quarantine. They're not worried about getting a stupid virus. They're basically running the show right now. 
everywhere I look outside, it's it's birds, not people. Birds are in charge, and I'm supposed to make them a house? I'm supposed to use my time in here to create something for a lazy, ignorant bird that can't make its own nest? No! No more! I will not mill the birdhouse today! Yeah, so I do my best thinking in the garage. Venting is a great hobby. My, my favorite. <laughs> what? Method four. I'm good at sports now. No one can stop me. Remember when you were a child and you thought you were good at things? Yes. And then you encountered other children and you realized you were terrible at those things. Yes. Well now, without competition, you can be the star athlete you've always had delusions of being. For those of you just tuning in now, we've got a barn burner. The new Prague Trojans, led by the all-conference Greta Madsen, are down by two to the Motorville Motorheads. It has been a stunning display of athleticism for Madsen, who has scored a season-high 87 points, recorded 27 blocks, and grabbed 42 rebounds. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't seen anything like it either, Dave. We're witnessing the birth of a new basketball goddess. This is like the first time I saw LeBron James, except so much better than that. She's already the best basketball player who has ever lived. Or will ever live. Or will ever live in alternate dimensions. And here we go. Madsen inbounds to Madsen. She spins. Oh my god. The moves. The moves are ridiculous. The ball handling on display is magical. It is so magical. She goes through the legs, then over the head of the defender. She shoots from long distance, just off the rim. Madsen grabs the rebound. She puts it up. She grabs the rebound again. Nothing can stop her. The clock is counting down. Three, two, one. Three, two, one. One half. And a foul! We're, that's it. We're just going to assume that she makes the free throw. The Trojans have won! The crowd goes wild even though it's social distance and six feet apart. They're losing their minds. They're storming the court. This is the greatest moment in basketball history. I can't believe what I've just seen. <sighs> and they're carrying her off the court! Well, I didn't think she was going to pull that one out. Shocking. I thought the Motorheads had that one. Uh, they totally blew it. I lost a lot of money on that one. But now we're on method five. The plays of William Shakespeare. That's Shakespeare. No, no, you heard me. Julius Seasbear, Act 3, Scene 1. <clears throat> The Ides of March are come, but I am constant as the northern star. The skies are painted with unnumbered sparks. They are all fire, and every over doth shine. But there's but one in all doth hold his place. So in the world, tis furnished well with bears and other stuffed animals, and stuffed animals are but stuffing and some felt. Yet, in that number, I do know but one that, unassailable, holds on his rank, unshaked of motion, and that I am he. Oh, seas bear! Hence, wilt thou lift up Olympus? Great seas bear, doth not bootless, bootless kneel? Speak hands for me! Ah! Oh no, I'm being stabbed. Ah, oh, so many stabbings. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, oh, I, I loved you all. Ah! Oh. oh. 
Et tu, Brute, then fall, sees bear. Liberty, freedom, tyranny is dead! Woohoo! Yeah! Woohoo! Yeah! Oh, uh, what do we do now? But it is not just terrible tragedies that are fun to perform with stuffed animals. No. Wait, it is terrible tragedies that are the most fun to perform with stuffed animals. How about a terrible tragedy where everyone dies? Just to catch everybody up, Frogius killed Hamlet's father and then married Queen Fertrude. Hamlet's father showed up and told Hamlet, Hey, I was killed. You need to go out there and revenge my death. And Hamlet was like, well, That's crazy, man, but... Sure, Dad. And then Hamlet killed Bertie's father for no reason. Now Bertie's is like, hey, man, you killed my dad, and I liked my dad. And Hamlet's like, I don't care. My dad's dead, too. What? And Hamlet's girlfriend killed herself because Hamlet was mean. Now Bertie's and Hamlet are about to duel. Except Frogius has poisoned Bertie's blade, and also he poisoned the cup, too, in case Hamlet was thirsty. Simple. Come, Bertie's. Come, my lord. Ching, 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 ching. One. Nope. Judgment. A hit. A palpable hit. Told ya. Uh, didn't count. You missed me, dude. He just said a hit. A palpable hit. I didn't hear that. He said it! He totally said it! Oh, come on! I'm thirsty. No, Fertrude! Ribbit. What, 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 what? Uh, uh, shoot! Poison! I'm dead! Uh, no! Villainy, seek it out! It is here, Hamlet! Hamlet, thou art slain! The treacherous instrument is in thy hand, unbated and envenomed. The king, the king is to blame. <sighs> envenomed? The point, too, then. Venom to the work. <sharp inhale> oh, dang it. Ribbit. Blech. The rest is silence. <sharp inhale> <sharp inhale> And pretty much everyone else dies, too. Greatest play ever! I think we've had enough senseless death, though. Method 6. Catch up on your studies. Uh, fun. Super fun. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica, and I'm here to help you. This has been a difficult time for everyone. But I think the best way to forget about everything is to just put your nose down and focus on your schoolwork right now. I am, and I love it. I'm learning so much. Yes, I have three little sisters that are driving me crazy. But guess what? I can just lock and bolt my door and booby trap the hallway so they can't get at me. I just put some headphones on, dive into trigonometry, and ignore their little screens. Numbers are my friends now. Speaking of friends, I'm actually running a special right now for math help. If you need someone to do your math homework for you, just email me and I will do it because I do not want to do anything else. It's math, 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 math all day long here. So happy. Speaking of math, I'm only charging $3.55 per assignment. Then, I email the assignment back to you, you put your own name on it, and turn it in as your own work. I offer bulk rates as well, 10 assignments for only $32, which is a savings of 10.94%. Again, math, I love it. Also, May is my special algebra sale, 5% off all algebra homework. Look for more, hello? You're saying that's illegal? I shouldn't be talking about it online? 
Oh. Okay. I did not realize that selling math homework online was illegal. This changes my business plans significantly. Luckily, I've been studying economics, so I know that when something is illegal, it becomes a lot more expensive. Therefore, my rates have changed. $22 per assignment. I'll be using the extra revenue to hire goons who will be enforcing collection policies. They'll be breaking your legs in a responsible manner. This is so fun. Seriously, buy now while you still can. I am your only hope. Without me, you're doomed. You won't regret this. It's good to see some of our students putting their brilliant minds to criminality. It's really the American way. But maybe someone out there is really studying well. Hey! Thanks, guys. My name is Dylan, and I'm here to show you exactly how great distance learning has been for me. Because it's been, um, it's, it's been a thing. It has definitely been, uh, been a thing. <sighs> well, oh. So the first thing I do is log into my email. And right now my computer is not on speaking terms with other computers. So that's that's cool. But that's all right because I can log in to access the help page that the district has made. Okay. Which is currently offline, which is fine. So I can't get to that. I've also forgotten my password, so I can't get a new password sent to me because there are a lot of requests for new passwords or something. I don't know. There's only so much internet, I guess, and it doesn't reach my house, and that's cool. That's fine. I am working through it. Mostly, I'm just trying to imagine what my teachers are trying to teach right now. Since I can't log into anything, or get anything to work, or get anyone to help me, or scream loud enough that the rescue workers can find me, I... So anyways, my teachers are not assigning homework. At least my imaginary teachers aren't, because they're very respectful of my time and want to make sure I have the most fun quarantine possible. But I keep trying. Well, well kind of. A little bit. You know, just making the effort every day for a good, I don't know, uh, five, six minutes, and then calling it. There's no use bashing your head into a wall over and over and over again, right? At some point, you just have to assume that learning is not for you. And, and to be honest, learning was not for me before this anyways. So I guess my teachers are not surprised at all I'm not able to log in. Although my imaginary teachers are just super chill about it. They're really impressed. Oh, shoot. I think my connection is screwing up. Low battery? What does that mean? My heart just grew three sizes watching that. The children are our future. Terrifying. Which brings us to method seven. Get really involved in the lives of squirrels outside your window. With limited options for television these days. You can watch The Wild Kingdom outside. Shh. Don't ruin it. Okay. Hold on. Darn it. They're not there. But they could come back at any minute. So let me fill you in on the latest updates between Kim and Kanye. It has been off the chain recently. So much drama. I can't even half the time. I'm watching and I'm like... I shouldn't even be watching this, you know? This is intense. Anyways, I've been taking notes, so here we go. Day one. They are so beautiful. Perfection with those soft puppy tails and little noses. They don't have a care in the world. Such a beautiful, happy home. Kanye goes out and gets the acorns and gives them to Kim. She loves him so much. Day two. When Kanye was out today gathering nuts, a new squirrel appeared. Stanley, he's sleek and skinny like a sewer rat. I hate him so much, but he goes up to Kim and Kim gives him the acorns. No, those are Kanye's acorns. He found those and she gives them to Stanley. 
Later, Kanye comes home and, where are all the nuts? Oh, Kim ate them all, I guess, you furry cow. But Kanye doesn't know what's going on. He goes back out because that's the kind of squirrel he is. He knows nothing. Day eight. Kim went out for acorns today and Kanye stayed back. Stanley arrived and it is on, y'all. It's like squirrel MMA in that tree. Get him, Kanye, get that thieving rat up and down the tree. Stanley will not be back. Mark my words. Day nine, Stanley's back. Kim gave him acorns. They are trash. They are so much trash. Day 12, Kanye is the king of trash. Kim went out today and two red squirrels appeared, Bridget and Jennifer, and Kanye was all about them. I've seen squirrels do things that I didn't think squirrels did. I can't even with him. No wonder she was giving nuts to Stanley. Stanley's a prince. Day 15. Milo arrived today. Milo is one sweet looking squirrel. They are falling for his nonsense. Day 17. I can't even with any of them, but I'm still team Kim till I die and... Who's that bunny sniffing around? This will not end well. And it is not just squirrels that have the drama. I never thought she was going to make it. It was impossible. The tree branch is probably 20 feet from my window. There are simply limits to what can be done. And this was, this is beyond. I was sitting here when I saw her. She was getting ready and I was like, you'll never make it. Turn back for Pete's sake. Stop what you're doing. This is madness. She didn't listen. Probably because she doesn't speak English. Or your things, maybe. I don't know. There's no way a medium-sized spider can make a web 20 feet across. What are you trying to catch, idiot? Birds? But I tell you something, people out there. She left from that branch with a filament of silk coming out of her backside. And she caught the breeze just so and soared to my window. She made it. I was still skeptical. Sure, you make it across once. But a web requires you to make many, many trips. So there's no way you're going to be able to make it back to the tree. Give up, you're doomed. You will never make it. Friends, she launched herself again. And again, she made it to the tree. I was stunned. Was this the greatest spider athlete in the history of the world? Am I watching? The Michael Jordan of spiders? She not bound by the laws of physics? And yeah, I realize I am using female pronouns here for the spider. But I'm pretty sure she's a lady since all employees get eaten immediately after mating. You learned something. I watched for seven long hours as that spider beat the odds, strand after strand after strand. And I thought to myself, she didn't listen to the naysayers. She didn't care what the crowd was saying. She knew what she was capable of. And that's a lesson to all of us out there. Don't let yourself be afraid. If you can dream it, you can do it. If you believe you can build a deadly trap 2,000 times your body length and murder as much as life as possible, you can do that. Then later a bird flew through it and destroyed the whole thing. So I'm not sure what that means. I learned that nature is not boring. So much for short attention spans. And now we come to the most popular survival method. Number eight, <clears throat> sleep. Um, 
live in pajamas, uh, eat chocolate, and uh, oh, binge watch shows. Or your weekend is now your life. Yo, I'm here to help you with physical fitness. Sorry, hold on. That took a lot of energy to vocalize like that. All right, second win. Are you ready to transform your body and your life? Don't answer that. I don't need to know. I'm just going to assume the answer is, yes, Noah. All right, ready? I want you to take your weights. First, mentally prepare for what you are about to do. Breathe in. Breathe out. That's right. Loosen those muscles. All right, then. And one, two, three. I don't want to lose. Now one, two, three. Release. One, two, three. Keep going, you can do this. I believe in you. Round one, two, three. Oh, oh my sweet fluffy kittens, this is difficult. I'll release. Round one, two, three. All right, guys, you did it. Now on to the decline chip press. Ready? One, two, three. And release. I love all you guys! I feel like these exercises were made for me. I, they give me hope. We can get through this if we don't do much. Exactly. But if you want to do something, there's Method 9, Spooky Stories. When we set out, we didn't know if we were going to make it back. Our supplies were running low and we had no choice. No choice. There were rumors that you could get what you wanted, but only if you waited in line. And then you got a cart and you were let into the Costco. But every so often, you could hear... If you listened hard enough, squeak, squeak, squeak. But as soon as you stopped, nothing. And then you'd walk, squeak, squeak, stop, nothing. I realized that there was a squeaky wheel on our cart. It was pulling us to the side. There was no way that we could go back for another cart. I tried to fight it. It kept pulling and pulling. Where was it taking me? To the personal care aisle. And that's when I saw one single bottle of hand sanitizer. The one bottle that nobody wanted. I reached out my hand. Do I dare take it? Why was it left here? Is it cursed? And that's when I heard a ghostly voice. Ava... I froze. No one was near me. Ava. Who was talking? Ava. It was coming from inside the hand sanitizer bottle. Ah! But I took it anyways because it's hand sanitizer, right? But every so often, when I'm in the bathroom, I can still hear. Squeak. 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 And our last representative of the oral tradition, the tragedy. This is a pre-recorded message. I am in danger. Don't try to contact me. Don't text me. Don't call me. Because, because my mom is taking my phone. I don't know how long she's going to keep it for. I guess this is some sort of punishment. I said take my leg instead. I don't even need two of those. But she wouldn't listen to reason. She's gone mad, I tell you, mad. So, okay. So I may have locked my little brother in the basement with a live rat. I might have done that. That may have happened somehow. And I also might have told him I was hiring child kidnappers on the internet and they were going to show up any minute, stuff him in a garbage bag, and take him away to an island fortress. 
I may have said that. Those words might have come out of my mouth somehow. But who has control for the things they say? Not me, obviously. What's next? I get punished for the things I threaten and don't even do all the way? I can see my phoneless future now, a barren wasteland with no communication with the outside world except the landline. I don't even know how to use a landline. And how will I know what's going on on the internet? I won't know. It's too awful to contemplate. The end is near, my friends. The end. I'll probably get it back tomorrow sometime, but I don't know how I'll make it till then. Thoughts and prayers, Kayla. Of course, of all the methods, there is one guaranteed to be the best way to deal with a life in a quarantine. Megalomania. That's right. The belief that you are the absolute center of the universe is the best way to deal with crises. Let's take a look. Welcome to the Kingdom of Seth. It is I, Supreme Commander, Ruler for Life, and High Overlord, Seth. Bow before me. Yes, I feel your obedience to my will. Good. I would like to draw your attention to some new developments in the Kingdom of Seth, from the city of Seth Tropolis. Today is Seth Appreciation Day. Have you told me how much you love and respect me today? Have you? I want to be clear that I am no longer in need of such things as the approval of others. I am beyond all of that now. There is only Seth. One moment. Mom, I'm busy. You know I'm not gonna take out the garbage? Do you know who you're talking to? I am Seth, overlord of the- Mom, stop it. You're embarrassing me in front of my subjects. Fine. The kingdom of Seth is threatened. But the kingdom of Seth is strong. We shall never surrender to the enemy. We shall never give in to fear. We are Seth. At this moment, I would like to read the new proclamations which have been passed by the Assembly of Seth, of which I am 12 of 13 members. The 13th member being Mr. Puppers. Now, Mr. Puppers had some ideas in committee, but he was outvoted and is now being investigated as a traitor to the kingdom. Who do you work for, Mr. Puppers? Who do you work for? Speak! We have ways of making you talk. You'll regret this. Let this be a lesson to any other potential traitors out there. Your kingdom requires obedience and sacrifice. Ask not what Seth can do for you. Ask what you can do for Seth. You can do a lot of things for Seth. Learn the lesson of Mr. Puffer's traitors. <sighs> Sorry. Your leader needs to take a break. Just remember that I am infallible and only believe me. Do not believe the lies of Mr. Puffer's. Seems healthy. He's gonna come out of this, okay? Like someone else I know. But this should be a time of celebration. How so? Well, I... Watch. Hi, everybody. It's my birthday. It's me, your favorite friend, Micah, who you didn't talk to that much. Well, I sent out the invitations to my party, but... I guess no one wanted to risk their life to come over here and celebrate my entrance into the world, so that's fine. That's totally fine. I don't need you to come over on my very special day. That only happens once a year. It's totally meaningless, right? But I am dealing with it and throwing a party for myself because there's one person in the world you can trust will love you through anything, and that's yourself. Yay me! Happy birthday to me. Woohoo!
Let's see what I got me for my birthday. <gasps> oh, I don't know what this is. You shouldn't have me. Hey, Micah, it's your birthday. I spare no expense. This is from my heart. Thank you, me. <gasps> it's my cell phone. This is amazing. It's already loaded with all your contacts and photos. <gasps> what? That is so thoughtful. How did you know? I know you so well. You do. I can count on you. I am always there for you, unlike those other people who didn't come to your party. Darn other people. Other people let you down, Micah. That's not true, me. I know there's a lot of people out there who want to support me for my birthday. They probably sent their presents in the mail. I'm sure they're on their way. Probably in the mail, aren't they? Let's see what else I got me for my birthday. Oh, I don't know what this is. Open it, open it, open it. It's money, so much money. All the money I have in the world is now yours. Oh my gosh, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm sure all the other people out there have sent me money for my birthday. They're probably mailing it to me right now. Probably in the mail. Lots of birthday money. Lots and lots of it. Because that's what friends would do. It's a good thing you stole their credit card information from the files at school. Shh! They're going to be really surprised. That's the best part about birthdays. The surprises. Well, it looks like everybody needs to call their credit card companies. So, so really the last method is steal? No, no, it's just, it's asking for gifts, forcefully if need be. I see. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Make sure to wash your hands and your children and your pets and birds that fly into your house. Thanks for joining us. This has been 10, Ten Ways, ways to, survive life to Survive Life in a Quarantine. Ten, Ten ways to survive, survive life, life in a quarantine. Life in a quarantine. Yoni? Mm -hmm. Ten, Ten ways, ways to survive, survive life in, in a, a quarantine. quarantine. Yeah.